Urban legends and folkloric tales are a predominant part of almost every culture on the planet. Everyone is familiar with the classics like Bigfoot, Mothman, or Bloody Mary, and with the rise of the internet, myths and folklore have been easier to learn about than ever. Historically, folklore was used to convey a message of caution to children to keep them well behaved, though these morals tend to fall flat in the modern age. Looking to other cultures for their myths and folklore could be immensely interesting and entertaining, and the Japanese do not disappoint in this regard. We looked into some interesting and unique urban legends and stories from Japan, and compiled some of the most interesting ones in this video. Hey bro, shawty bad. Yeah. What's good, ma? What's good, ma? God damn. First up is probably the most well-known entity in Japanese urban tales, Kuchisaki Anna, aka Slipmouth. As all gamers know, talking to women is hella scary. The legend of Kuchisaki Anna plays into this fear by not only having you talk to a woman, but a paranormal woman at that. Described as the vengeful spirit of a once beautiful woman, now bearing her iconic slip mouth as she stalks the streets of Japan in search of victims. Kujisaki Anna is said to approach victims wearing some type of garment covering her mouth. She will then ask the victim if they think she is pretty. If the victim answers no, they'll be sliced open with scissors. If the victim answers yes, she will remove her face covering and ask the question once more, am I pretty? If the victim answers no this time, they'll be given the Darth Maul treatment and be bisected at the waist. If the victim answers yes though, she will mutilate their face to resemble her own. Varying sources theorize where she came from. Some claim that she was the wife of a samurai and committed adultery. The samurai, in a fit of rage, sliced her face from ear to ear, giving her her beautiful, life-draining looks. Luckily, your fate won't always lead to mutilation or death. When she asks her signature question, just reply with Yakanamid, or distract her by throwing money or hard candies and running away. The lesson that can be learned here is that talking to women will always be a life-threatening experience. As gruesome as she may seem, Slimmouth is relatively tame compared to our next paranormal killer. Quieres? Public transportation in Japan is impressive, some of the best in the world. The trains are clean, fast, and efficient. However, waiting for the train can be a mundane hassle in everyday life. The last thing you'd expect is half a girl with a scythe running toward you. The origin story for Teke Teke varies from source to source. Some claim her death was the result of <laughs> while others claim that she died of a tragic train accident. However, all stories claim that she was cut in half via train, something that would be impossible with America's 2.5 mile per hour trains. The reason she is called Teke Teke is because of the sound her elbows make as they scrape against the ground as she chases you. The only way to make her go away is to tell her where her legs are. Fella. Legs. Man. Fella. We don't know if this means to just flat out lie or to actually tell her where her legs are. Either way, we doubt most people would have the mental faculties to answer a question in this situation. While Teke Teke may not be the most adept at social interaction, our next mythical creature is a bit on the friendlier side. I'm a little guy. We've been talking about creepy folklore and legends from Japan so far, but let's dial it back and talk about a ghost who's just a little guy. You're walking alone at night and decide to take a shortcut through a narrow alley. As you're walking along, you feel something off about your footsteps. They seem to sound louder than normal. This is because our little man in Japan, Bido Bido san, is actually walking right behind you. While Bido Bido is described as not having a set form or appearance, most artistic interpretations depict Bido Bido san as just being a little guy. Because Bido Bido san has no set form, the only way to know if he is near is through the sound his wooden sandals make as he walks behind you. <laughs> Proper etiquette in this situation is to step aside and say, after you Bido Bido san, and let the little guy go on his merry way. What makes Bido Bido san different from all the other tales we've talked about so far, is that he isn't harmful or malevolent in any way. All he will do is get closer and closer until he's right behind you, stepping while you step. As he passes by, his footsteps will begin to fade away into the distance. Remember to wave goodbye to Bido Bido san. Of all the myths and legends we've discussed so far, none come close to the ridiculousness that is. You bear the mark. You are cursed. Our tale begins in the Kansai region of Japan in 1985. The Hanshin Tigers were something of underdogs in a poem professional baseball, also known as the NPB. They aren't the best team in the league, but they do have devoted fans who flock to their stadium in mass to support them. Their luck would turn over when they managed to beat the Seibu Lions and secured their first and only win in the Japan series. Some attribute their victory to their American first baseman, Randy Bass, who later on served as a senator for Oklahoma. Don't fuck with this senator. After this win, fans were ecstatic to say the least. Hundreds of miles away, fans of the Tigers rallied on the Ebisu Bridge in Osaka to celebrate their team's momentous achievement. 
One by one, fans resembling the players would scream the name of the player they represented and would jump into the canal below. However, the fans were lacking a Caucasian person to act as Randy Bass, so they got the next best thing. Nearby, a KFC restaurant would proudly display a statue of the late great Colonel Sanders. Now, the Colonel is white and has a beard, so fans thought he would make a great representation for Randy. The insane crowd stole the statue and threw him into the canal below. This had some unforeseen consequences. This would be the catalyst for the Hanshin Tigers' 18-year losing streak. After this event, the Tigers would place either last or second to last in every season for the next 18 years. They attributed this losing streak to the sacrifice of the Colonel and sought to rectify their past sins by attempting to recover the statue. Unable to find the Colonel, the fans apologized to the store manager. But alas, the Tigers were cursed indefinitely. The Tigers' luck would turn in 2003, however, when they won the Central League, qualifying them for the Japan Series. Many speculated that this was the end of the curse placed on them by the submerged Colonel. Win the Japan Series. Unfortunately, the Tigers lost the Japan Series. However, fans were ecstatic nonetheless for their first Japan Series appearance in 18 years. This time, fans took to the same Ebisu Bridge, and instead of a few fans jumping in while representing players, 5,300 fans all jumped in in celebration. Many KFC outlets in and around the area hid their Colonel Sanders statues inside, fearing the wrath of the Tigers fans. The original KFC location where the lost Colonel statue was once home to had their new statue bolted to the floor to avoid another incident. The celebration wasn't without incident, however, as one Tigers fan, 24-year-old Masayas Tababa, drowned in the river after being shoved in by fans. The statue was thought to be long lost until divers miraculously recovered the Colonel from his watery grave in 2009. They managed to piece together the poor Colonel for the most part, as he was missing his left hand and glasses. The statue was returned, not to the original KFC location as it has been removed, but instead to a branch near Koshien Stadium. They say the curse will only be lifted once the Colonel is made whole again. The Land of the Rising Sun is home to many strange myths and legends. Some scary and others comical. We hope you learned something today. And if you didn't, that's alright. We hope you enjoyed it anyway. G.I. Jane のジョークだったんです。